Lord, are you happy to be here? Praise the Lord. I'm so excited for the privilege to come today. And I believe that the almighty God is here with us because where two or three people are gathered together in his name, he is there in their midst. And I believe God, he will do what he has promised to do for everyone today in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Uh, you are welcome in Jesus' name. And I just want to let you know that God will do great things for each and everyone that have come here today in Jesus' name. You will not be disappointed. Say amen to that. You will never be put to shame. Another amen. And I want to let you know that some of us here, this conference will be your last conference. Some people are not excited. I say it will be your last conference. I'm sure you know the title of the conference. I'm sure you know the title. It's the singles conference. That's what I mean. You will not come back for the single conference again in Jesus' name. So as we have come, I want you to have great expectation because God reveals himself in different ways to different kinds of people. So don't get distracted. Focus on him. And he will reveal himself to you in Jesus' name. Let's bow our heads to pray. Almighty God, we are very grateful to you because you are a loving God. You are a merciful God. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, because you have created us, every one of us here, brothers, sisters. You have created everyone to show forth your praise to show forth your glory as we come to your word because there is power in your word. We pray by your spirit, Lord. Let the seed of faith be planted in every life here today in Jesus' name. And that faith will not die. That faith will produce something that they will rejoice about in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know Lord, I can see everything turning around. I see everything turning around. For your life, everything will turn around. All the weeping, all the frustration, all the complication. Today, as you have come, you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know you are here because you believe God can do something. And I too believe because it is only by believing that we can receive. If you don't believe, you cannot receive. And that is why the message before us is faith for turning points. I'm sure the program has been titled Turning Point. And you'll be asking yourself, what needs to be turned around in my life? You need to identify it. Because if you don't know what needs to be turned around, you may not know what to pray for. So today, we are looking at faith for turning point. And turning point from the present predicament of singleness. Turning point from the disappointments, turning points, from the delays, turning points, from every form of failure. Today, I want to assure you that God will turn everything around. Maybe you have been there. You say, oh Lord, when will it be my own turn? And you have tried this one, no way. You try this, no way. You try this, no way. But I want to tell you that God makes a way where there seems to be no way. 
Say amen. I say God makes a way where there seems to be no way. And I tell you today that God will make a way in Jesus' name. For everything to turn around, there needs to be faith. Because without faith, we can't receive anything from God. If there is no faith, you can't receive. You need faith to be saved. If you are not born again, you need faith to be saved. You need faith to live a Christian life. You need faith to be victorious. You need faith to conquer temptation. So also, when it comes to the will of God, knowing the will of God, doing the will of God, we need faith because without faith, you cannot please God. And I believe God that faith will arise in your heart. Faith will break forth in your heart today in Jesus' name. We cannot talk about faith without looking at the Bible. And if you are there, I'm sure you came with your Bible or in your phone anywhere. There is no way we can talk about faith without looking at the word of God. Why? If you look at Romans chapter 10, the reason why we have to go to the word of God. Any, any kind of faith outside the word of God is just a mere motivation. But faith in Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith for turning point. Look at it in verse 17. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is why for us to talk about faith, we need to hear the word of God. The word of man, we, we fade all, along the way. What's the philosophy kind of words? They will not last. And that is why, brethren, I want to encourage you that today, the Lord will turn everything around. You will go back to that word. If you want your faith to be built, the muscle of your spiritual life to, you know, to be strong, you need to get into the word. And I believe God, the Lord will turn everything around in Jesus' name. Mark 2, chapter 21. That is where we are taking our main text. Matthew chapter 21, verse 21. Look at what the Bible says. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith, today you will have faith. And doubt not, ye shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. Amen. Jesus spoke the word. He said, this fig tree, you have been standing here, not producing anything. And immediately Jesus said to that fig tree, you know, to wither. And the disciples were there. They were wondering. And the tree was still there. But by the time they came, they saw that the tree has withered. Jesus spoke with faith. And today, that same faith is available. And you will receive in Jesus' name. And when faith comes, because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, what happened? The mouth speak. If faith is in your heart, what you will speak will be the language of faith. If fear is in the heart, if doubt is in the heart, you will discover that you will be doubting everything that comes your way. In verse 22, it says, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. What's the next one there? Believing, and ye shall what? Receive. Faith is believing. And it is what you believe you receive. And today, you will believe. I will go to the Mark account in Mark chapter 11. I just have to read the word of God because that is the root. That is the that is where faith originates from. In Mark chapter 11, 
verse 22. It says, the same thing, if you go to verse 22, Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in what? In God. Have the faith of God. Don't have faith in yourself. Don't have faith in man. Don't have faith in philosophy, ideology, whatever you've known about marriage. Have faith in God. And for you to have faith in God, you cannot have faith in God if you don't have the word of God. That's the, that's the basis of our faith. And if you go in verse 23, for I verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, I don't know the mountain, maybe you have been there for a long time, you have been praying. I want to tell you, there is a God that answers prayer. There is a God that turns the impossibility to become possible. And I want you to have faith in God. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't, don't, don't surrender. Don't throw in the tower. Have faith in God. For he shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in, in his heart but shall believe those things which he has said. Which he has said shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he said. In verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, you will desire something today. The Bible says that he that findeth a wife, what? Findeth a good thing. You cannot find look for something without desiring it. Am I right? There must be a desire in your heart. And that is why he said, and therefore I say unto you, whatsoever, what thing soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe. Hallelujah. He said what? Believe. When ye pray, what did he say we should do? Believe. You will believe today. He said believe. That ye receive them. Even when you have not got it. Believe that you have received. We are still going to look at that area. You believe. You finish praying. You say, Lord, I thank you because you have done it. I thank you because I have it. I have not seen it yet. But I thank you because I know it will come. Believe and it will come to pass. And look at it. Believe and it shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. But if you go to the next verses, therefore I say unto you, what is so ever in, in, in verse 25. And when you stand praying, what did he say we should do? Forgive. If you have fought against any. You see, unforgiveness neutralizes faith. Unforgiveness. Hatred. Maybe you have done something wrong to someone. Maybe you have disappointed someone. Go and say to it so that your faith will not be neutralized. You know, he's saying, and when you stand praying, forgive. Anybody done something wrong to you and you are carrying the person in your heart. Faith and somebody in the heart, they cannot admit together. Something must give way. Let that pay. Go and sort it out. Because if you don't sort it out, you are imprisoning yourself. And the other person is going forward. But when you release that person in your heart, when you forgive, he said, and if you have ought against any, that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your what? Your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And that is why when there's unforgiveness and you want to get married, you will, you, will, you will not get the will of God. Because you have not done the will of God in letting go. I pray today, faith will arise in Jesus' name. Actually, Faith is the absence of fear. Fear and faith cannot stay together. And what is fear? If you write the word fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence. What? Appearing real. You know, especially in the area of marriage, many that I've spoken to, that have spoken to me, have discovered one thing that is very common. It's fear. Either fear of the past or fear of the future. False evidence. Hey, there's a lion in the way. There's no lion. Hey, there's a shadow. In fact, David said, if I walk through the world, the shadow of what? Death. It's a shadow. It's not even there. 
So, fear must give way today. I say fear must give way today. In the name of Jesus, I want to tell you that when faith comes, fear goes away. When faith comes, fear what? We run away. And faith can only come through the word of God. Fear comes through the word of man. If I, most of the people that fear, oh, I spoke to this person. Oh, I watched this kind of film. And if you see the way they demonstrated their marriage, if I, I began to be saying, hey, I don't know. I'm just scared. I don't know what tomorrow. That's fear. But when you go to the word of God, fear will not have room in your heart. Fear is the cause of failure. Fear is the cause of disappointment. Fear is the cause of confusion, complication. Maybe your case is complicated there. Today, the God of heaven will bring solution. Maybe you say, oh, my situation has become so hopeless. I want to tell you, the God that created you, he created you for a purpose. Say amen. He created you for his glory. Every hopelessness to the turning point, the Lord will turn them to hope. In Jesus' name, every negativity, every impossibility, there is hope arising today. No wonder the Bible says, when the Lord turned away the world, the captivity of Zion, every singleness here present today, the Lord will turn them away. I said the Lord will turn them away. And he said, when the Lord turned away the captivity of Zion, we are like them that dream it. It will happen to you as if you are dreaming. It happened to me, and I'm going to see share some experience. It will happen to you as if you are dreaming. But I want to tell you, God knows you. I say the Lord knows you. He cares for you. He loves you. He wants you to get the best. Three things we are looking. Number one there is the precept of faith. We need to understand some important things about faith. The precept of faith. The principle of turning point. When you know the precept of faith, that is the principle of what? Turning point. If you don't know anything about faith, you will remain in the same way, except God show mercy. I pray the Lord will show mercy. Point number two there is the practice of faith and the promise of turning point. There is a promise for you. I say there is a promise for you. And you will hold on that promise. Let me tell you this. If you don't have a promise of God's word, you will not do the will of God. But when you have a promise of what God has said to you, and you stand on that promise, it may take one year, it may take two years, it may take three years, and you say, no, this is what you have told me. Maybe in your quiet time, you wake up and the Lord says, I will do this unto you. And you jump up and nobody was even there. You are dancing for joy. If you hold on to that promise, it will come to pass. So that is why you need to discover the promise of God for your life. And then finally, we look at the persuasion and the performance of faith. The persuasion of faith and the performance of a turning point. Actually, faith brings a turning point. And today, there will be a turnaround. The precept, quickly. We cannot talk about the precept of faith without going to the chapter of faith. I'm sure you know the chapters of faith. Yes. What is the chapter of faith? Hebrews. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. There's a precept of faith, which is the principles of turning point. Quickly, we will run. Quickly. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. As I'm going, I will be telling you... Uh, if possible, if time permit, some things that even happened to me that I learned for waiting. <laughs> your waiting will not be in vain. I say your waiting will not be in vain. Praise the Lord. Look at it. Let's just read some few verses there. Verse 1. Verse 1. This is it. Now, we want to look at that faith. Now, can we shout that word, that first word together? Want to go? Now. now. Can we say it again? Now, I will tell you the reason why we are saying that word. Some people's faith, they base it to last year. Oh, last year. No, 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 no. You come to God now. Now. I say now. Now, faith is, not words, the substance of things hoped for. Not what I hoped for in the past. What are you hoping for now? 
Substance of things hoped for. You have not seen it yet, but what's the next word there? The evidence of things what? Not seen. You have not seen it, but you believe in your heart, I will get it. I say you will get it. If there is no hope, there will be no faith. And you hope in verse 2. For by it, elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. If you don't believe that the world was created by God, then there is no faith there. It's by faith we understand that. The, uh, of course, you know what is being said out there. No, it is by some iron coming together. No, if you believe that God created the world, it's by faith. Look at it there. Through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So, all things which are seen were not made of the things we do appear. And if you jump to verse 6, but without faith, it is what? Well, impossible to please him. I will put it this way. This way. Without faith, it is impossible to do the will of God in marriage. Without faith, it is impossible to get your partner, God's ordained partner, I'm telling you, there's somebody that God has reserved for you. And by faith, you will get that person. But somebody that says, no, I don't this faith rate. I don't want it. Let me just go ahead and do whatever. You will go and get your own. And you don't know what is ahead. You don't know what the future holds. But God knows the end from where? From the beginning. Can we say that together? God knows where? Let's say it again. Say it for the last time again. God knows the end from the beginning. What you know now is limited. But God knows what is ahead. And that is why when God is giving you what he has for you, don't doubt God. Because God knows what is ahead. And that is what we are seeing in verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must do what? Must believe that he is. Hallelujah. Our God is. Amen. He is the I am that I am. Another amen. He is the never failing God. Another amen. He is the one that makes a way in the wilderness. Another amen. He is the one that makes a way in the desert. The Lord will make a way in your wilderness. The one that makes rivers in the desert. He is that turns impossibility to become possible. You need to know that about God. He is that makes all frustration to be turned to favor. Maybe you have messed up. And you say, I have messed up big time. I'm telling you, many have messed up big time. But when you come under God, he will turn your mess to mercy. I say he will turn it to mercy. Oh, I have made a mistake. I ran ahead of God. Moses ran ahead of God. But God brought him back to his destiny. Today, the Lord will bring you back. And that is what we are learning. Faith is the unshakable confidence in the believer's heart. A sinner cannot have faith to do the will of God. All the sinner needs is to have faith to be saved. Because when you are saved, you now come to another level of faith. So faith that we are talking about in knowing the will of God in marriage is for those that have given their life to Jesus. Is the unshakable confidence in the believer's heart in what God says in his word. It is absolute. What did I say? Absolute. Total. Trust in God's word regardless of what may be lost role. What may be tied. You stand there. Oh Lord, I will not disappoint you. Oh Lord, I will do your will because you have saved me. If you have saved me, I know this one. It's not too hard for you. You will do it for me. And the Lord will do it for you. I said the Lord will do it for you. You are standing there. I could remember different, no, 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 no. And I met one of my leaders. And he told me, I said, sir, he said, let her go. Let her go. Let's see what God will do. Uh, but you keep on serving the Lord. Do you know that serving God is an art of faith? Say amen. Hallelujah. If you are not serving God, you need to start serving God. Because that's an act of faith. Continue to serve God. And I'm telling you, look at, uh, I'm sure you know, Elizabeth, and they were not serving God. They were not even praying for themselves. 
they were praying for others. It is when they were praying for others, God remembered them. So if you say, oh, I have not seen my partner, I'm not going to do the work of God, again. see my friends, see my mates, they have all gone ahead, and you leave the word of God. Ah, God will not remember you, but thank God, you will continue to serve God. You will be involved in the work of God. So faith is forsaking all, all the doubts, F, forsaking, A, all, I, I, T, trust what? Him, you forsake all. Or we can put it this way. Full assurance. Hallelujah. Unshakable assurance. F for full. Assurance in trusting heart. You will trust the Lord. Quickly, let's run. Let's run with some precepts. Let's remind ourselves of some of those precepts of faith. And as we go on, the Lord will begin to sow that seed of faith in your heart in Jesus' name. Number one, we have read it. That now, faith is the substance of things of for. Quickly, faith is not the past, it is now. And today, you will get it now in Jesus' name. If you have lost faith, today the Lord will restore that faith. If you have lost hope, today the Lord will restore that hope. Number two, if you look at verse 6 there, it is believing God to do what he said he will do. Because without faith, it is impossible to do the will of God. Number two, we have read it in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Number three, the precept of faith, it comes through God's word. It it's not by watching videos. It's not by watching all those, um, I don't know, the program where they'll be bringing people that are having marital problems. I've forgotten that program. And they'll bring people that are having marital problems. And you are knowing more about problems. Faith will not come. Faith is about what? Hearing God's word every day. You need to hear how God speaks to you. Number four, it's not, number three, I, I repeat again, is it comes by hearing God's word, not ideology, not philosophies of men, not what your friend says. Even it's not about somebody else's marriage. It's not about what somebody has done. It is what God is telling you. Number four, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's open our Bible. We have seen the first three prince, uh, precepts. Look at the number four precepts. Verse 5, verse 7. Uh, chapter 5, verse, verse 7. It says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. That is marriage for you. You want to get the will of God? We walk by what? By faith and not by what? By sight. Because what you get by sight will fade off eventually. But what you get by faith will never fade away. I say what you get by faith will never fade away. And I pray we will not walk by sight in Jesus' name. Some people walk by what they see. The will of God is not by what you see. The will of God is not by, you know, how tall, how short. No, the will of God is by faith. And that is the life of uh, the kingdom citizen. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. And the Bible makes us to know in Romans chapter 14, verse 23. In Romans chapter 14, verse 23. It says there in verse 23, Romans 14, verse 23. It says, and he that doubted is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of it. This is where I'm going. For whatsoever is not of faith is. Can we say it together? For whatsoever is not of faith is all sin. Do you know that it's an affront against God when you doubt the word of God? When God said, I will make him and help me. Who will make and help me? Who will make and help me? Who will make and help me? Praise the Lord. It's God. It's God that will make and help me. But when you doubt God, it's a sin. And if you go on before we uh, finalize in, in James, the Bible says that faith without work is what? Dead. You know, some people say, I have faith. They are not here. They are not here. Is that possible to have faith? They are not here. Faith, if you want to get the will of God in mind, you need to take a step out of your comfort zone. 
because faith alone without work is dead. And lastly, in Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, very important. In Romans chapter 12, then we go on, for I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think so badly, according as God has dealt to every man, what? The measure of faith. Praise the Lord. There is a faith in your heart there. There is a measure of faith. But the problem is, you need to activate that faith. Faith is like an elastic band. I'm sure. Do you know the rubber band? The rubber band? If you don't stretch that rubber band, it will never be useful. Faith is like that rubber band. You need to, there's a measure of faith in your heart. But it's just that people have faith for other things. Look at as we are sitting on that chair. We didn't try to make, well, who made this chair? We just sat down. It shows you have faith. But when it comes to the area of marriage, we now want to be questioning some questions. No, we have a measure of faith. Step out of that faith. Now, how can we step out? The practice of faith. Praise the Lord. Remember, I will just go straight to John chapter 10. Just quickly, John chapter 10. The practice of faith and the promise for turning point. John chapter 10, verse 25. John chapter 10. Quickly, in John chapter 10, the Bible says there, verse 25, Jesus answered, them. I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But if ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you, verse 27, let's read it together, verse 27, my sheep what? hear my voice, and I know them. And they do what? They follow me. And if we go to verse 5, and a stranger will they not follow, but we flee from him, for they know not the voice of a stranger. That is how we can practice faith, by hearing the word of God. If you are not a sheep in the shepherd, in the sheepfold, that means you are not born again yet. You need to come into the kingdom so that the father can speak to you. I listened to somebody recently. He said, Faith, there was a house that was maybe born in. And in that house that was born in, it, the child was in that house. And the father was somewhere, wanted to rescue that child. And the father said to the child, He said, Jump. He said, but dad, I can't see you. The father just said, jump. I'm sure the, the child knows the voice of his dad, isn't it? And the child jumped. Because there's no way he would jump. The father what? He catch it. That's true. He didn't see the father, but he just jumped. I pray we will begin to hear the word of God. Number one, faith will reckon it done. Romans chapter four, Abraham was a, was a father of faith. He staggered not at the promise of God. He reckoned it done. Faith reeks in taking step. Faith will remove every doubters. Faith will restrict every kind of negative confession. Faith rests in the word of God. Faith will rejoice. You have not seen it yet, but I will rejoice. There's, though there's no uh, sheep in the fold, but yet I will rejoice. And faith receives. But before I go, I want to tell you, brother, sister, there's a passage in the Bible that the Lord spoke to me when I was still praying. I heard that passage, I don't know how long, but I was standing on that word. I will read it because of time. I would have read a lot of passages, but because of time. But let me quickly read Jeremiah chapter 33. That's for me. I don't know what God will give to you, but today God will give you a word to stand upon in Jesus' name. And I was waiting. In fact, many a time I said, oh Lord, ah, this is what you said. But Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 11, there's a promise of God for you. 
This is what the Lord told me in verse 11. He said, the voice of joy. Somebody there, a voice of joy is coming to you. The voice of gladness. The voice of bridegroom. Are you there? That is going to be heard about you. And the voice of bride. Wow, in my life, you are going to hear a voice of bride. The voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts. For the Lord is good. For his mercy and joy forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the fall, says the Lord. Amen. And I was standing, I said, Lord, when will that voice come to my life? When will that voice come? And I want to tell you, the voice came. And the same voice will come to you. Maybe you are there. You are standing on the word of God. God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. For I will make him a what? And help me. If that's what God is telling you, stand on it. Maybe you are the one there. God said, forget ye the former thing. Whatever has happened, forget. He said, behold, I will do what? A new thing. Maybe that's what you are hearing. Or maybe the Lord is telling you, arise and do what? Shine. For your light is come. Hallelujah. For the glory of God is risen upon you. What voice are you hearing? What promise are you standing upon? And I tell you, the Bible says, maybe you are the one here. The Lord said, all the Egyptians that you see today, ye shall see them again no more. Amen. For I, the Lord, I will do what? I will fight for you. You need to stand on the promise of the word of God. If you want your faith to stand, and I believe your faith will stand in Jesus' name. And maybe you are there. And you say, oh, I married before. But maybe I, I become a widow or maybe... I have maybe single, you have a child or something like that. I will just read this verse before we go to the last point. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 54. This is a word of God for us, for somebody there. Isaiah chapter 54 in verse, in verse 3. It says, for thou shalt break forth on the right. Somebody there, you will break forth on the right. And on the left. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Verse 4. Verse 4. Verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. The Lord fulfill it in Jesus' name. I will round it all with a persuasion. Whenever there is faith, there must be a persuasion in the heart. If you look at Romans chapter 4, I will not read because of time. Number one, Abraham's strong persuasion. The Bible says he staggered not, uh, you know, uh, he staggered not his faith. In Romans chapter 4, verse, 6, uh, verse 20. Let's just go to Romans chapter 4. Abraham staggered not. Today, your faith will stand. You will not stagger. You will not doubt God. In verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God. True unbelief, but was what? Strong in faith. You will be strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he is able to perform. What God has promised you, he will be able to perform. Number two, Ruth. Remember Ruth in the Bible? He lost the husband. The sister also lost the husband. And maybe you are there, you have lost your husband, maybe you have lost your wife. But do you know what? Ruth came to that point. We call it a steadfast persuasion in faith. He said, no, I will follow you. Where you die, I will die. Where your God is, I will go there. The sister have gone back. But let me tell you, the Lord favored Ruth. Say amen. And there's no way you could talk about Jesus Christ without mentioning Ruth. I pray you will be steadfast in Jesus' name. We saw Hannah. That was a, what I call a sincere persuasion. Oh, count not thy handmaid, the daughter of a belly, but I am crying out of the sorrow of my heart. When you are sincere with God, the Lord will locate you in Jesus' name. Remember Jacob said, I will not let thee go until what? Thou bless me. Can we say that together? I will not let thee go until what? Thou bless me. Jacob was supplicating in, in persuasion, and we saw a lot. Let me just read this last passage as we go. As we run it up, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. I want to assure you that today, you will, the Lord will show himself to you. Don't be a... Just like that boy. Dad, but I can't see you. Just jump. When you hear your father's voice, be rest assured that all will be well. I say all will be well. I will just round up with this passage. Brethren, don't go outside the will of God. It's dangerous. If you are not born again, get into the kingdom. It's very simple. Oh Lord, I am sorry for all my mess. I am sorry. I prayed that prayer at some point, even in the will of God. Maybe you did so. Maybe you, you did not obey God. You say, oh Lord, I'm sorry for not obeying you. You just oh, forgive me, oh Lord, and I'm ready to do your will. Just surrender unto God, and you will see everything will begin to turn around. I say everything will begin to turn around. I will read this passage, the last passage in Luke chapter 1. In Luke chapter 1, there's a promise of God for you, and there will be a performance in Jesus' name. And by the grace of God, your waiting will not be in vain. Luke chapter 1. The angel appeared unto Mary in verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Seeing I know not a woman. But verse 35 said, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Amen. And overshadow thee. Praise the Lord. And if you go to verse Verse 30, 37. For with God, nothing shall be what? Impossible. This was the words that Mary had. And look at what he said in verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me what? According to thy word. And the angel departed from her. I pray today according to the word of God that God will be revealing to you, it shall be unto you. It shall be unto you. And in verse 45, praise the Lord. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be, what? A performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. I just want to encourage somebody there, the Lord will wipe away your tears. The Lord will bring to you the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you, all the shame, all the reproach of the youth, you will remember them again no more because God has the best plan for you. And today, there will be a performance in Jesus' name. I waited for a long time, but the Lord remembered me. That same God will remember you. And you don't even need to wait because you don't need to learn. You know, you need to learn from others. Get closer to your leaders. Amen. When you have good counselor, the Bible says, in the multitude of counselors, there's all, there is safety. I have some of our leaders here. They know. I discussed with them. I could remember I was very far away. I called one of our leaders. He said, what are you doing? Move on. And today, somebody there is going forward. They may, not, they may not talk palatable to you, but they mean well to you. Amen? And I pray you will not miss it in Jesus' name. We are going to rise up on your feet and say, Lord, Lord, behold, your son, your daughter, be it unto me according to my faith. Tell the Lord, Every fear, every doubt, the Lord take them away. Every impossibility be counseled in Jesus' name. Tell the Lord that this program will be a blessing to you. You will remember this program for good in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Pastor, for that. My key takeaway is fear is from the words of men.